Hey everybody, and I have another review for you today. The book I'm reviewing the 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 book I'll be reviewing today is Tombstone: The Great Chinese Famine from 1958 to 1962 by Yang Jishen. This book was published in 2012 by Farrar, Strauss, and Guru, and this edition has 656 pages, and it only has 61 ratings on Goodreads. Um, but this book, however, has been was first published in 2008, and it already been printed in eight editions, two years. I think it was very popular. And um, of course by now it's been banned in China. Um, so this book um, is about um, pretty much what happened with the Great Leap Forward with, as everyone, I hope a lot of people know about Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao, um, and how he was trying to push his ideal of a communist utopia. But ultimately as this book illustrates, his real driving purpose was to really overtake the Soviet Union, which he felt in competition with, especially since Khrushchev um, was started, uh, I think, criticizing Stalin. And this book really is very, very fact-heavy. It has a lot of numbers, a lot of tables, statistics. Um, it has a lot, and you could tell this book had a lot of meticulous research and study um, put into it. And the main motivation for writing this book, and the reason why it's called Tombstone, is basically because he was personally affected by this Chinese, this, this great famine. His own father had died during the famine, and um, but at the time when he was a student studying, and he was really caught up in the whole um, in communism, and he was a party man for a very long time, and he just assumed that his father just died from starvation and it was a fluke. It was not something that was very commonplace, but as, as he as he learned more about the situation and that more people had starved, he really found out about the, the extensive effect of this famine as well as pretty much how it came to be. And so this book goes through the peasant level and then it you can actually, the peasant level of this famine and also the perspective of this famine um, from even from the perspective of Chairman Mao. And um, I found this book terribly engrossing. Um, this is not this book is not for everyone. It has it's not only is very fact heavy, but it has a lot of personal accounts of really horrific things such as cannibalism, starving to death, seeing people die from diseases, the extents that people went to get food, the brutality of uh, the corrupt cadre that were really controlling these villages um, and it is a lot of information. Um, personally for me, um, I didn't, I wasn't put off by a lot of information, all, all this very, uh, all these detailed information and, and I know that some people might be put off like, okay I already read this account of cannibalism and starvation, why is there another account? And, um, but in this book he really goes through very meticulously and he goes through this is what happened in this province, this is what happened in this province, and it's kind of unfair to say a starvation story from one province is good enough to be applicable to all of the provinces, so he is very thorough, and um, he is very also very thorough in just really describing the political environment in which the famine occurred, and how a lot of these conditions um, happened, and it's a, I think it's a very, very good look in um, fanatical governments, um, you know, governments gone awry, uh, the dangers of cults of personality, and I honestly thought this was like the biggest example of positive thinking run amok, because I, in my opinion, I think this is really a quick easy way to sum up how this could happen, and it's just positive thinking. They were too goal-oriented, they were too sure of themselves and their ideas and that they must work and if they don't work they must not be implemented properly and any bad news is not valid and just shut out all all criticism like even they knew that there must be things wrong but they purposely said don't tell us any bad news only tell us good news and that led to a lot of false reporting about the grain a lot of false reporting about the health and health of the peasants and a lot of mis misrepresentations of um, 
the conditions that the peasants were going through. And so I give this book four out of five stars. I can understand um, this book was probably more so for someone who listens regularly to like things like NPR or BBC or CBC. Is that what they have in Canada? I think that's what you have in Canada. If I'm wrong, I can probably just annotate it. Then <laughs> it's I can fix it. The joys of technology. But uh, also as maybe a companion to this, if you're not familiar with the Great Leap Forward or the Cultural Revolution, this actually happened before the Cultural Revolution. I suggest read some of the, some of the Revolution. I forgot the author's name, but I'll probably put it down below. And um, this it might help give good context for the events of this, and also it might prime you for uh, more facts because this is really really fact heavy. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this book for those who are willing to understand more about this event and and also maybe even understand how maybe what's happening in North Korea. Even though this happened in the late 50s and the early 60s, many of these concepts that um, are demonstrated are still possible today. So, Alright, so that's my review. I hope you have a great day. I can't wait to get outside to get a sandwich. Alright, um, talk to you guys later. Bye!